When she found her beast dying in her apiary, she knew something was really wrong. She's still alive, but her head is stuck in the nectar. Her abdomen is still moving, you see that? Honeybees shaking and trembling are typical symptoms of bees exposed to neurotoxins. Pesticide kills are common threats to beekeepers located around farms. However, there is a problem in this case. This apiary was not near any farm. Dr. Judy Smart, a honeybee researcher from the University of Nebraska, immediately activated her team and started sampling the surroundings to find where the pesticide exposure was coming from. But little she knew that this was just the beginning of a terrifying story. Dr. Smart, we detected something really strange in the milkweed samples close to the river we tested last week. How strange? The pesticides levels were so high that we believe it can hurt people. That can't be possible. Send it back to the lab. For sure it is a mistake. We already did. It is confirmed. I can't believe it. I have a feeling this is bigger than we think. The leaves of milky weed plants were full of pesticides close to the river nearby, indicating that the river was probably the contamination source. So they contact the agencies responsible for that to figure out if there is something wrong in, in the neighborhood, something that have happened. And boy, these stories start to get really weird. Alton Ethanol Plant is using treated seed corn as their primary carbohydrate source for ethanol. And while they have the treated seed stored inside of covered warehouses, we have learned that the distiller's dried grain wet cake coming out of the distillation process is heavily contaminated with just about everything used in the seed treatments. I don't know how attractive this byproduct would be to honeybees, but Alton has been stockpiling the wet cake on the property and the wastewater is held in two large lagoons as well. Both the wet cake and lagoon water have high concentrations of neonix, pyrethroids, and multiple fungicides that have been implicated in causing bee gut dysfunction. The unfortunate bottom line is that our complaint response policy requires that we have a good idea of a possible source of pesticide causing a problem. And without a solid lead of where pesticides might come into contact with the bees, we really can't conduct a regulatory investigation. It is more along the lines of a research investigation. In this facility, ethanol is produced using corn seeds. This is a common practice in the United States, so there is nothing new here. The problem is to use pesticide treated seeds to produce ethanol. The process is laborious and at the end produce not only the alcohol intended, but also a lot of liquid and solid waste, leftovers from the process. In normal situations, the solid waste is used to feed farm animals and the liquid waste to irrigate crops. All good when the waste is not contaminated with high concentrations of dangerous pesticides and fungicides exposing the animals and crops with harmful concentration of chemicals that will end up in our food supply, which is shockingly legal, by the way. Just take a look at the size of these piles of wet cake. It was estimated 100 tons of the waste. And an even more concerning part is that every time it rains, the wet cake is washed away and the lagoon overflow contaminating water sources in Nebraska, damaging the whole ecosystem, killing pollinators, birds, and very likely hurting human beings in the process as well. The EPA has set up the maximum daily dose for neonicotinoids in food and water in order to avoid the risk of harming humans. This dose ranges from 4 to 70 parts per billion. So the maximum safe dose for a kid weighing 30 kilograms or 66 pounds is 2,100 parts per billion per day. More than this dosage per day, people start to get hurt. Now guess how much neonicotinoids were found in these lagoons? 30 to 50,000 parts per billion. This is 23.8 times more than the EPA limit, ending up 
in the water supplies and crops that will provide the food that you eat. The question now is how many more of these cases we have out there that we never heard about? Are these the only misused situations that we can find regarding pesticides out there? How many of these honeybee die-offs we mislabel as something else? After working for four years at the USDA, eight years researching in three different universities in the United States, and now as a private consultant for the beekeeping industry, dealing with beekeepers, farmers, and companies on a daily basis, I develop a significant concern about the pesticide industry and the regulatory system that support it. When a honeybee die off like this one that happened with Dr. Judy Smart occurs for conventional beekeepers, it is not always clear cut to diagnose it as a result of a pesticide use. The topic of pesticides is controversial for various reasons. In my personal opinion, many experts from universities and government institutions tend to either avoid the topic or provide the same response. It might be varroa mites. Yes, varroa mite is a big problem and I have covered in my channel many, many times and I will continue to do so. But because it is a big problem, it has also become a skip route for all professionals in the industry who wants to avoid the controversial topic. In a market economy like the United States, addressing these problems is the only driving force to create better products in the future. When we ignore the problem related to the product and stop demanding quality and safety as customers and citizens, there is no chance for a new and better product to be developed and reach the market. After read the pesticide report from Cornell University and together with my personal experiences from the field, I am convinced that pesticide use is a bigger problem than we anticipated and farmers might not getting the return of investment they think they get. That's why I promote the New York bill called Birds and Bees Protection Act that passed the Senate in New York. This act aims to substantially reduce the use of neonicotinoids and I think this is a good thing. I also want to encourage the people from Vermont to take a look and if they agree to sign the petition link in the description of this video. Dr. Judy Smart is doing a phenomenal piece of work at the University of Nebraska where she researched the effect of pesticides on honeybee health and other pollinators and she's also delivering and revealing talks about the dangers of it. If you are a beekeeper, I want to encourage you to attend Dr. Smart's science policy and advocacy training at the American Beekeeping Federation on January 11 in New Orleans. Pesticides are dangerous and should be taken seriously. Inside the Hive TV was designed to educate people about honeybee research, talk about the different experiments and bring the people together in the discovery journey. So I will be restarting my pesticide video series in the near future. So you can see with your own eyes the research done and take your own conclusions. Until then, I would like to thank my members for their support and you for watching. Inside the Hive.TV, the show about bees. See you guys next week.